Hello everyone, I missed mentioning something about relative path as part of the previous video. For one specific file or one specific directory, there could be multiple possible relative paths. Why is that the case? That is because relative path to a file or a directory totally depends on your current working directory. You might be trying to access one specific file from inside two different directories. An example of that would be trying to access my.docx file from inside C drive x slash y slash z or trying to access the same my.docx file from inside C drive x slash y directory. Notice that the relative paths for both of these accesses look very different. What about the absolute path to a specific file or a specific directory in your directory structure? There could only be one possible absolute path to a file or a directory. Let's move on to learning about shell commands. Just like you can use Finder or File Explorer to navigate your directory or file structure on your laptop, you can use shell commands to perform the same navigation. In this video, I'm going to introduce to you various shell commands using a series of slide decks. In the next video, I'll be recording a demo of all of the shell commands that we cover as part of today's lecture. I'm planning to record two different versions of the demo video, one for Mac laptop and one for Windows laptop. Please pick and choose one of those videos to watch depending on what laptop you're currently working on. Let's learn about navigational commands in shell. The first command that I want to introduce is the pwd command, which is the abbreviation for print working directory. As you might be able to guess, pwd command displays the absolute path name to the current working directory. In this particular case, that's slightly redundant. That's because the prompt itself displays the absolute path to the current working directory. You might be able to configure the prompt to display different content and displaying absolute path names to the current directory is one such option. You could also possibly display the name of your laptop. Let's learn about the cd command, which is the short form for change directory. Recall that the double dot is a special directory representation. Double dot refers to the current working directory's parent directory. Right now, we are inside the scratch directory. Parent to the scratch directory is the trh directory. So when I say change directory, cd space dot dot, it will take us to the parent directory, which is trh. Another command which is very useful is the clear command. Let's say that you've been typing for a while inside your terminal and your terminal looks all cluttered. If you want to clear your entire screen and have a blank screen, you can use the clear command. Let's continue learning about the cd command. When you use the cd command, you can give the relative path to the directory where you're trying to change the current working directory to. So let's say that we want to go back inside the scratch directory. We'll have to say cd space scratch and that will take us back to the original location that we started with. What will happen when I say cd forward slash? Am I talking about Windows laptop here or Mac laptop? Go ahead and pause this lecture video here and write a comment in the comment section stating whether this display is for Mac or for Windows. If you were thinking it's for Mac, you had the correct answer. That's because we have forward slash. Windows uses backward slash typically. When I say cd slash, I'm telling my shell to take me to the root directory, which is given by slash. What would ls command do? 
ls would list all the files and directories inside the current working directory. What if we are interested in reading the contents of a particular file? What command can you use for that? You need to use the cat command. You need to say cat and then space readme.txt, which is the file name that you want to read. And then the cat will display the contents of the file, which is the file says hello. Let's talk about arguments. I'm not talking about two human beings having a disagreement. I'm talking about passing additional information to programs. We have already covered a couple of commands where we have passed arguments. Let me tell you which part of the command is considered as an argument. Let's revisit the cat command, which just displays the content of a file. The name of the program itself is cat, whereas the file name here is considered as an argument. You're telling the program name cat to display whatever is being passed as an argument, take the content of that argument file and display the content onto the screen. Let's learn about the echo command. Echo is sort of like a parrot. When you say echo hello, it will just simply display hello onto your screen. Echo is the name of the program and the argument here is the text hello. Why is this useful? This is useful when you can combine it with what is called as file redirect. Sorry, output redirect, my apologies. Let me show you how you can save output to a file. So you can say echo hello and then use the greater than symbol and provide a file name. That is called as redirect operator, which enables you to send the output to a file. When you say echo hello, that prints the word hello onto the screen. Whereas when you redirect the same to a file, the file's content will now be the text hello. You need to be careful with redirect usage because you might accidentally overwrite an existing file's content while doing that. So when you say echo hello redirect output.txt, previous um, input or data inside output.txt will get overwritten. So you need to be careful with that. I'll show you how you can do append redirection as part of the demo video. Let's move on to the demo next. I'll go ahead and wrap up this video here. Let me reiterate this fact. The next demo video will have two different versions. It is sufficient for you to watch just one of those versions.